And do you remember our discussion on colorectal cancer? You, you know you wanted more. You came onto our social media, you were asking for more. So yes, because of the love we have for you, we have brought them back so we can have that conversation. Professor Jonathan Dakubo, consultant general and colorectal surgeon at Kolebu Teaching Hospital, and also Dr. Kwabna Agbedinu, consultant general surgeon, Konfa Nochi Teaching Hospital. Professor and doctor, you are welcome. Again, thank, thank you very much. Okay, is there a need for me to make sure that I don't have colorectal cancer at all? Yeah, certainly there is uh, a need um, that anybody at all should do whatever he or she can to prevent development of colorectal cancer. Yeah, and. Prevention is very key here. And for colorectal cancers, we have two levels of prevention. Mm. We have primary prevention and secondary prevention. And primary prevention is all the measures that we put in place to avoid developing colorectal cancer. Right. And much of it has to do with the risk factors, the modified risk factors I spoke about. Mm. Uh, our diet in particular. Um, if you see the incidence of colorectal cancer in the developed world, it's more than 50 per 100,000 population. Mm. In our part of the world, it's still less than 2 per 100,000 population. population yeah. The 90% reduction in incidence rate is just because of our diet alone. Mm. So we should maintain our diets we should avoid going into westernized diets. Mm. We should avoid eating foods that are preserved to um, prolong their shelf lives. Right. Because they contain substances that are cancer uh, or that lead to the development of cancers. Cancer. So yes, one physician spoke about this in 1960. In Uganda, when he said the African who lives off the soil hmm. does not develop colorectal cancers because hmm. our cassava from the farm is yeah. in the pot, our yam from the farm is in the pot. We don't go through the meal. No. So that alone is primary prevention. Wow. Secondary prevention is what uh, Dr. Kwabna will be talking about, yeah. which has to do with somebody who has developed a cancer or somebody who's taking personal measures mm -hmm. to prevent the development of the cancer. Yeah. And that we're talking about screening yeah. in this case. So please take us through the screening. Okay, just before that, I want to add something to the primary Sure, please go ahead. I'm going to talk about diet. Another important thing to consider is exercise. Mm. It is known that exercise can reduce your risk for getting colorectal cancer. cancer. So most people doing sedentary lifestyle, the market will be just sitting yeah. out at the time. Those who, based on their work, they are mm -hmm. always in the office like and you driving. and stuff. <laughs> you should do some exercise, walk around, if you right. can park your car at a, a distance and walk for some short distance and buy something, it's very important. Hmm. Reducing weight, obesity is, is also a risk factor which we wow. mentioned the last time we were here. Yes, you So did. just reducing your weight also decreases your risk of getting colorectal cancer. Wow. So that said, in terms of screening, you know, mm -hmm. the idea of screening is trying to get, prevent a disease at a time that it, it has not become a cancer yet. Right. So, in colorectal cancer, the last time Prof mentioned that it starts as a polyp, mm -hmm. a small group, which is not the cancer Itself, yet, yeah. but is the initial part with several gene mutations that will occur before the cancer will come. So if you are able to find that polyp early mm. and remove that polyp, you are prevented the cancer. Wow. So it's so important to yeah. do that. There are two ways of doing, going, going about this. Mm -hmm. One which is the gold standard, is doing what we call the colonoscopy. Right. It's investigating the colon. The mm -hmm. last time Prof showed yes. the colon. So we pass a tube which has a camera, camera. and a light source. Yeah. So I think we had a video Yes, we had a video on yes, that. Prof They'll show it soon. Prof will yeah, show that's it. That's it. I think Prof wants to talk about it. Prof. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a colonoscopy. Uh, and the scope is going through the large intestine. It's like a tunnel. Mm. So you see the mucosa mm. of the, as you are going on. And we pass it through the back passage of the anus and go all the way through the large intestine. 
So the, in a way, if you see any polyp, hmm. uh, we remove it. Right. And once you have removed the polyp, its progression to become a cholera cancer, uh, it has been interrupted. So that's why cholera, because, because cholera, you see directly, hmm. it is not a surrogate marker. Right. You are able to see the mucosa uh, properly. So that if there is any disease there, you can remove it. Right. Doctor, please just continue with yes. the training. So the second aspect is, you know, colorectal cancer, one of the symptoms is bleeding. Mm -hmm. And the polyps can bleed small amounts. Mm. But you will not see it in your blood, in your stool. Stools. So we call it occult blood. Mm. It's not, it's hidden in the stool. Right. So if you look at the stool, it's not. There's no blood. There's no blood. So how will you find out? So there's a test. Mm. They can do the stool based test. Right. Fecal, stool, occult blood test, which is available here in Ghana. In Ghana. And okay. every year, everybody should do that above the age of 45. Wow. And for colonoscopy, everybody to, from 45 and above should do the colonoscopy. Wow. Yes. And at least that one, you can repeat it five years if everything is fine. But for the stool test, because the sensitivity is not as good as the colonoscopy, mm. you need to do that every year. And when we find the blood inside, then we'll have to do the gold standard with the colonoscopy to make sure to find out what is leading to the blood in the stool. Our fear is the money that is always involved when it comes to testing. So most people would ask themselves, how much does it cost? So because of that, they will restrain themselves from going for through all of these tests. Tell us about costs. Yeah, <laughs> cost, professor. Yeah, cost is very important uh, uh, consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about health, and health is expensive. Of course. Um, unfortunately. Cancer treatment generally is not on national health insurance. No. Investigation for all cancers is not on national health insurance. So that is a big uh, challenge. And going forward and with our development, we hope we'll get to a point where national health insurance will take yes. care of uh, these things. But having said that, um, screening for colorectal cancers, the occult blood test is done once a year. Right. And the colonoscopy is done once every five years. Oh. Okay. So if you do a colonoscopy today and it is, uh, yeah, you are declared fit, until five years you don't need to you do know, it. Because oh, okay. of the series of events that will take place. But if uh, between now and five years a polyp develops, mm -hmm. uh, it will not develop into a cancer no. before. Uh, so, yes, yeah, colonoscopy is expensive because the, the colonoscope itself is expensive. Mm -hmm. The preparation for it is expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing we use for everybody. The sterilization is expensive. Right. So you realize that in some centers, they are taking about 3,000, 4,000 to do it. But since we are a colorectal unit, and that's our work, um, yeah. it's about 700 Ghana CDs for the colonoscopy oh, to make it affordable for, for Ghanaians. But we are hoping that going forward, um, uh, we'll get it on health insurance. Many in private insurance companies actually pay for it, mm -hmm. for their members. Yeah. But we'll see how maybe in future we can get a national health insurance to do that. So many people can do colonoscopy. Awesome, awesome. You mentioned, doctor, you mentioned um, by age 45 or above, you should get checked. Who else can get checked apart from the persons in that age variation? Okay, if you have a family history, the age 45 is for everybody, you and I, anybody mm -hmm. here listening to us. Once you are 45, you are what we call average risk of getting colorectal cancer. Right. You must check for it. But if you have a family history, you should be checking for it earlier. Mm. Usually, it should be a few years, five years below the age at which your relative got right. the colon cancer. So, you have a relative, we have the relative called the first degree relatives mm -hmm. your mother, your father, your yeah. sister, Sisters, and your stuff. Brothers. If yeah. they had colorectal cancer, your chance of getting colorectal is very high. Mm. So, you have to check for it much earlier than the 45. Okay, so do we treat um, colorectal cancer the same way uh, or what are the various treatments of colorectal cancers that we have? Yeah, um, we say the treatment of colorectal cancer is multimodal. Oh. Uh, it is not one approach. Mm -hmm. There are different approaches to treating these cancers and there are four of them for now. Mm -hmm. uh, one is surgery, is mandatory okay. because a solid tumor surgery is mandatory, either open or laparoscopic. They will have radiotherapy, mm -hmm. um, so for the rectal cancers. You have chemotherapy for okay. all the cancers. And then for advanced cancer that has spread, what mm -hmm. we call targeted therapy. Mm -hmm. 
But as we go up the ladder, the cost gets higher and higher and higher. Mm. So that is why if the cancer is diagnosed early, then the cost is yeah, less. Lesser. <laughs> because surgery alone may be able to deal with it. True. But once you add chemotherapy, radiotherapy, targeted treatment, the cost is off the roof. So let me add this. Is it curable? Colorectal cancers are curable. Awesome. They are curable. You see, the other time I spoke to you that you need at least five gene mutations for the cancer to develop. To develop, yeah. And about 131 genes have matured with this cancer. Mm -hmm. And different sets of genes confer different properties to the cancer. And there are genes that confer spread mm -hmm. to distant sites. Mm -hmm. These genes may be early events or they can be late events right. in the form of these cancers. But typically they are late events. Mm. Typically they are late events. So if somebody has come with an early cancer, the possibility that the metastatic gene mutations have occurred is low. In which case, when you do surgery and the stage is good, stage one, stage two, mm. you may be able to cure those people. But there are people mm. I have well, cancers two, in the year 2000, 2001. They are still alive. Oh, wow. Yes, they are still alive. It That's means these people, we caught them when they had not developed the metastatic uh, gene mutations. So yes, if we get them early, we should be able to cure some of them. But if you come late, and what we call the tumor mutation burden is mm. high. You see, the tumor mutation burden has to do with the number of mutations in the tumor. Yeah. Low is anybody who has less than seven mutations. Yeah. Seven to 15, 15 is moderate. 15 and above is high tumor high. mutation burden. With 15, the possibility that metastatic mut has occurred is high. Ooh. So that is why we're insisting that screening and early detection is the way to go. Okay, so we you've talked about availability. We know that there's Kolibu Teaching Hospital that has the facility that can be able to help. Apart from Kolibu Teaching Hospital, is there a facility that is solely involved with this treatment, the screening, and all of that? Yeah, thank you very much. So my whole concept of developing colorectal cancers for uh, uh, colorectal cancer surgery and treatment as a subspecial for Ghana. Uh, was broader than it can be seen. Mm. The first approach was to get people enthusiastic about being colorectal surgeons. Mm -hmm. The second thing was to have a space in which to work and to expand the space. So the first approach was to train somebody and then to control to train people who do colorectal cancers. The next thing was if all Ghanaians were to go to Kolebu Teaching Hospital, mm. there would be no space. No. Not so the next approach was to create space where, and especially when I'm on retirement, I can still have access to theaters to operate. So I went ahead to uh, found the Mintuba Hospital right. and Coloproctology Center, mm. um, which is well equipped to diagnose and to treat surgically almost all colorectal diseases, including the cancers. Mm. Um, of course, by extending the training to Kumasi, wow. by extending the training to Kumasi, uh, training uh, Dr. Uh, it is to open another center in Kumasi where Ghanaians can have access to uh, quality colloidal surgery. So, yes, Kolibu Teaching Hospital is there. Mintuba Hospital is there, where I work almost every day and I <laughs> operate every weekend. You recruit every weekend? Yes, and I train, the, awesome. I train, I train the, the trainees there too. That is how come it is so big. Yes, I train the trainees And well-equipped. Well-equipped. Wow. What so, you're seeing on TV now is the Mwing Tuba Hospital. And Coloproctology and Center. So mm -hmm. specialist hospital for colon erectile surgeries. So apart from Kolibu Teaching Hospital, this hospital, Mwing Tuba, is well equipped to be able to take care of all colorectal cancers, screening, prevention, cure, and even the training sessions yes. that you have for doctors like our doctor here. Yes. So with the training, how do they go about the training services? You have to pay something, you have to call. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> for now, uh, for now, uh, well, like I say, it's formally informal. <laughs> okay. Formally informal is because the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons have done the groundwork but for it to become formal. Okay. But for now, it's informal because I'm operating every Saturday and I do wow. three to four major surgeries every Saturday. Wow. And I'm operating with them. Hmm. So they operate in Kolebu on Friday. And on Saturday, they are operating. Because surgery is skill. It's yeah, hand. Their true. hands you must be working all the time. And they are with me from 9 o'clock till we finish the last case. Hmm. And a trainee who gets exposed like that, after one year, 
you have seen almost everything. Mm. So that so they see the patients, we evaluate them together, we make a diagnosis together, then we operate together and we do a follow up together. But most of the time, I'm there to see that if there's anything, I let them know what is happening. So yes, they have a bigger avenue, and of course, Ghanaians look for where they can get a cure. True. So the material yes, yes. to train the next generation is there. Awesome. And like one of my teachers said, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, David uh, Nia Mokuti will tell you, in Africa, we have the material to train the best surgeons mm -hmm. in Ghana here, the living and the dead. Doctor, you are one of the first. What has been your experience so far, and what advice would you give to someone out there, a doctor out there, who may have lost hope that they will not have the opportunity that you may have had? Thank you very much. It has been great, actually. Um, my local faculty, Prof. Dakubu and Dr. Bowen, have been wonderful in the training. They actually held my hand to acquire the skills I need for the best kind of service if I, when I go back to Kofonochi. I want to encourage my younger colleagues to come and join colorectal surgery. Is the bad thing now? <laughs> <laughs> Get the base of skills. And I have a foreign faculty, Prof. and Laurie Gifty Kwachi. Mm. They have been wonderful. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Prof, your final words before we leave. Yes, uh, maybe to everybody. Now, um, all over the world, uh, academic hospitals are all moving away from the concept of general surgery yeah. to subspecialty surgeries. Uh, we are late, but not that late. Uh, when I I'm told that in America, this campaign started 25 years ago, yeah. and ours started 15, 15 years ago. Years, so yeah. we are not behind. So yes, colorectal is a, is a subspecialty, and anybody who has a colorectal disease should be a colorectal surgeon. Yeah. One, so that you can get the quality evaluation, the quality treatment, and of course, by extension, the younger generation can also be imparted the knowledge and skill, so that in future, we will also become a very good center that other people from West Africa or yeah. Africa yeah. will come to have the training done. Awesome. So yes, Coloreta has come to stay. Coloreta training has come to stay. And people should access the services of Coloreta surgeons in Ghana here so that they can be cured of their diseases. Thank you so much, Professor Jonathan Dakubo, Consultant General and Coloreta Surgeon at Kolebu Teaching Hospital, and Dr. Kwabana Agbedinu, Consultant, Consultant General, Surgeon of Konfarnoche Teaching Hospital. Thank you so much for coming, gentlemen. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having us. Please get screened, get checked, and always make sure you know your status.